Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So today we're doing Rise. This is one that I've really wanted to do for a long time because I personally love Rise. It's hot as hell in my room right now, but I'm getting it done. So let's jump straight into it. So first of all guys, before we get right into the nitty gritty, I just wanted to say, Rise is one of the most versatile champs in the game. He is simultaneously the most basic and most advanced champion in the game, and you'll kind of see why in this video. And he is genuinely one-trickable. People always ask me, what's Curtis, what's the champion I recommend you recommend for one-tricking? And I always say I hate one-tricking. But if you do want to one-trick a mid-champion, Ryze is probably the only mid-champion you can actually genuinely one-trick where it does not matter if they counter-pick you because you can outplay it, you can outmaneuver it. There's so many things you can do with Ryze, and we'll get into the details within this video. And... The great, the most amazing thing I love about Ryze is that there's so many little details that, like, what turn him into an average champion, but into a decent champion. And you need to know all those little details if you're going to win games. So we'll also cover that in this video. So straight away, guys, let's start by covering the matchups. So I'm going to kind of do this very briefly. And if you have any more questions about matchups, build, etc., make sure to ask in the comments or in my Discord. So we'll start off with the bad ones. So in my experience, bad ones are champions like Anivia. I think Diana's really hard for Ryze. Katarina, Yasuo, and Syndra. These are all bad for differing reasons, but majority of the time it's because Ryze actually can't CC them and keep them off him. And because Ryze early game, you know, he just has a root, he doesn't actually have a stun, it can be quite hard. Or he's going to get extremely outranged by champions like Anivia and Syndra as it gets into, you know, into mid game and post 6. Um, talking about average matchups... These are champions like Orianna, Twisted Fate, Victor, Zoe, Cassio. It's pretty much most champions in the game uh, are the ones that kind of fall into this category. And this is because they can fall either way. Yes, you can look at it in an isolated 1v1. Um, Victor, for example, would beat Ryze. Victor can poke, poke, poke. Ryze can't really do anything about it. But a really good Ryze player, and as you'll see in these videos... And why in high elo, Ryze has actually become, or has always been a bread and butter champion for a lot of high elo players. You can outmaneuver it, you can roam, you can do so many things. So don't just think of Ryze in an isolated 1v1. And when I say these matchups, I'm not thinking of an isolated 1v1. I'm thinking about winning the entire game. And then the good matchups. Good matchups are champions like Kiana, Akali, I would say... Um, Vladimir and Silas. These are also champions that Ryze just destroys. There's not many of them, but again, these are just a few off the top of my head that I think are, are really, really good for Ryze. And again, I, if you have any questions about specific matchups, just ask me in the Discord. So then we're going to talk about build. So this is the standard cookie cutter build for Ryze that I tend to go most games. Yes, there are a lot of variations with Ryze builds, but this is just the standard one. Starting Mana Crystal, go into your tier, um, go into then Catalyst. Rod of Ages, finish your Archangels, then you can just go whatever you need, whether it's Morellos, Zonyas, Rabadons, you know, whatever you whatever you feel free for that specific game. Yes, there are a lot of variations. Yes, you can go like things like Righteous Glory, Abyssal Mask, you know, you can actually skip Roa completely and just go full AP, like Magic Pen build. There are a lot of variations, but this is more like the cookie cutter that will work majority of games. So guys, let's jump straight in. Alright guys, jumping straight in. So the way I'm going to do this video is the first portion of it is going to be Ryze versus Ari. And the second portion is going to be Ryze versus Talon. And the reason I've done this is that these two games encompass all the, I guess, all the general fundamental things that you really need to understand when playing Ryze for yourself. And I don't play these games perfectly, which means I make some key... Um, errors and I'm going to point this out in this game so you don't make the same mistakes on Rise and you know exactly what you need to do if you're going to play Rise in your own games and you're going to really understand step by step what to do. So straight away guys in, in all my videos I really like to talk about level 1 game plan and I really put an emphasis on levels 1 to 3. So we th always need to think about the jungle matchup. In this specific game I'm versing Ari, Lee Sin and I have Rise. Rek'Sai, which means that two very aggressive early game junglers that have level 2, level 3 ganking opportunities, and which means there's most likely going to be some brawling um, in the rivers most likely early, because junglers are going to be looking to gank, um, whether it's mid or top or bot, so I need to be very act thinking about that actively. The second thing, in terms of knowing what either A, what uh, ability to level up level 1, and 2, how I want to play the wave, I also need to think about my first objective. And as Rise, your first objective is to get to your tier. And the reason you want to get to your tier as soon as possible is because you want to minimize the amount of time that it's actually an Archangel's, not a Seraph's, or rather than a Seraph. So um, that's basically really why you want to get your tier first, um, and the mana really helps. 
So in terms of what I do with my abilities, I actually start with W and people always ask me, how do you know whether to start with W or E? So my take on it, always start W unless you need early wave clear. Let's say hypothetically you're versing an Aurelian soul who's going to push you in really, really hard levels one, level two. Start E because then what you can do is actually go EQ and it's going to give you a lot more wave clear. But if you feel like you're just going to be keeping in the middle, it's not going to be too crazy um, w then E is a lot better for trades because you can do uh, E, W, auto, run away with phase rush. It's a really reliable trade. Whereas if you go EQ, it's a lot harder, a less, lot less reliable to get poke off. Um, and it can be a little bit sketchy. And also the good thing about W, E is that you have really good gank setup if your jungler decides to do a level 2 gank. So straight away, guys, as Rise, you want to be looking to proc your mana flow as fast as possible. So you just walk up and use your W on them. And in terms of the wave location, I'm really, really happy with keeping it in the middle. Because I'm versing an aggressive jungler and Ari has decent gank setup, I don't really feel the need to kind of start E and hard push Ari under tower. It's all it's going to do is going to lessen my ability to kind of get to my tier. And it's also going to make me quite vulnerable. So notice here, guys. Straight away, I'm already standing away from the minions because Ari most likely is going to start Q here, which means that I don't want to be standing in the middle here, which means Ari can just Q me and Q the minions, and then he's going to be able to push me in under tower. Put, getting pushed in under tower is not too bad, but for, like I said, at level 1, I am expecting a lot of action in the early game, and if Ari's pushing me in, Ari's going to be able to get to the fights first. So ideally, I'm happy with keeping the wave in the middle portion of the of the lane here. So I'm standing outside the wave a little bit, so he goes for a Q, and it's very difficult. And again, I just trade back with my W, constantly looking to proc my mana flow brand. And in terms of being mana, in co mana conservation, guys, you don't want to be spamming your abilities on Rise, because um, especially in the early game, you want to make sure that you're conserving your mana um, and really kind of extending it out. And you do that through using your abilities when your mana flow is is off cooldown. So at me, in terms of what I'm looking on the screen, I'm constantly looking at this timer here. And as soon as that timer is up, I generally like to trade unless I have a really good, a, a very favorable trade opportunity. And the reason it's really important to manage your mana on Rise is because he's very wave reliant. And let's just say um, I'm using all my abilities on Ari, and then I realize, oh, I want a base for tier, and I've got like 500 gold, and I have no mana, I'm not going to be able to shove out the wave and base. But if I know I've conserved at least half of my mana pool, I can use EQ, EQ the wave, reset, come back with tier. So that's a, uh, that's a big tip on, for when playing Rise. So, wave's in a decent position. And I've actually got a little bit of a slow push going on here, which is actually ideal for me. And I, I want here, I wanna, I, one thing I actually want to highlight, when you know, I knew here that I was going to get level 2 um, before this guy, because I knew that I, I counted the amount of minions. I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and he had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, which means I know that I had the minion advantage, which means I'm going to get level 2 first. So, look at my positioning. I'm positioning quite aggressively up in the lane. No way I'm going to get level 2. I got level 2 first. Um... And I was able to get a nice little bit of poke there. And this is really, really good. And the good thing about uh, Rise's, Rise's early river skirmishes are actually quite strong. Um, so this is another benefit of, of kind of building a slow push in the early game. Because you're going to get the river skirmishes first, which is very favorable. The second thing, guys, you need to understand is that if you CS very well, you can actually afford tier of three waves. That's something to just keep in mind here. So this is the third wave here. If I, if I were to CS perfectly, um, then I would actually be able to base, push this whole wave in, recall, and get tier. Notice here how I'm not standing behind my minions. I'm standing out here. I'm confident that he can't throw charm at me because, you know, the distance in out in the open like this, it's very easy for me to dodge side to side. But secondly, my me pushing up aggressively like this, it's very hard for Ari to walk up and cue the wave. So he can't thin this wave. And this is going to be really good for me because um, the scuttles are spawning very soon and I'm going to be able to get to a fight if a fight breaks out. Again... Just kind of riding my wave into the tower. Nothing too special going on here. Constantly looking to proc my mana flow whenever I can. 
and now I'm leaning onto top side. Notice how I'm leaning onto top side. This is a little bit scary, but I knew that after this wave, I was going to push in. I was going to straight away lean into river because my top lane is my jungle is ganking top, and I was going to get a ward either over here or be ready to back up just in case Lee Sin um, counter gangs top. So I'm using a health pot now. Then I just E the wave. CSing as much as I can. And that's my other quick tip here, guys. CSing on Rise is apps like I say this a lot on, on certain champions, like on Victor, on Twisted Fate, on Rise, on Oriana. A lot of these champions that are very item reliant, making sure that you're CSing very well is important because um, if you know if you miss a bunch of CS and you're focusing too much on poking them and you maybe you miss, say I'm I'm on 12 instead of 10 I'm just not I'm not I was tw sorry 12 instead of 20 I'm actually not going to be able to base and recall for my tier and if I can't recall for my tier it's going to mess up everything my moment I'm going to have to stay in lane with no mana I'm going to be super vulnerable things can can get out of control very quickly that's why I've, I, I strongly recommend at least focusing in the early game hardcore on CS and it's just a good habit to get into and now look at this straight away a skirmish breaks out I'm already here to to respond and unfortunately it doesn't look too favorable for us but I thought that it was going good here and I try to like e I, I flash EQ thinking that it'll get the double bounce and then W this guy and then um, burst him and then potentially run away but then they he got the double triumph proc and I didn't account for that with the red buff heal as well. I trade one for one, uh, which is not the end of the world. The good thing about this, Ari was missing CS mid. I have teleport, so it's not a big deal. But um, that's just the way it is. Uh, we should be winning those skirmishes given that I, I have first move into river, but it is just, this is solo queue. Sometimes not much you can do about it. So this is another good buy here. When you come back, you get your tier. Um, sometimes I like going second um, Sapphire Crystal because I want to be my second objective. I want to be building towards my catalyst. This is a personal preference for me in terms of itemization. I feel like in games where you want that tankiness, um, Rod of Ages is really good. And I think it works really well with Ryze and his kit given he's a very low range champion. There are some Ryze players that don't feel like they need Rod of Ages and they'll just go straight into Lost Chapter, finish their Archangels and then go like Morellos or something like that. That is also fine, but this for me, personal preference, I love Rod of Ages, I love Catalyst, I think Catalyst is an amazing item um, because of both the, the stats it gives you and then also the passive on it, which you heal off using abilities. And the beautiful thing about Rod of Ages is that it's one of the most gold efficient, in terms of stat efficient items in the game. That's just a little, little fact. So I get to teleport back here, Ari unfortunately hasn't had the luxury to recall because um, you know, she, had to, she responded to that, to that fight. She wasn't able to shove out the wave completely. And now I know, right, when you're in any lane that you take, because uh, Ryze takes teleport majority, 90% of games, and you're versing someone who doesn't have teleport, you want to keep them in lane as much as you can. And knowing that um, Ari, so the way you keep them in lane as much as you can, you either keep the wave on your side with a freeze, so they know that if they recall, they're going to miss a, a lot of CS, or you keep pushing into them so they can't reset because they need to keep CSing the, the minions that are pu getting pushed under tower. Alright, so now, um, because I know that I want to keep Ari in lane here, I'm just getting a little bit of vision, which is just going to protect me, no, um, it protects me to be able to push up in my lane and keep um, Ari pinned within this laning phase. So Rexa ends up reganking top. I put a ward on both sides. I don't use my other trinket. I only use one of my trinkets. It's actually quite inefficient to use both your trinkets at the same time. So I put a trinket in on one side and a pink ward on the other. This is just for double safety here. This isn't really necessary. A lot of the time you can just use wards on one side and heavy lean. Just what I felt like doing in this specific part of the game. Why do I put a pink on top side though, guys? And this will make a lot more sense as you see this game pan out. But... Given that this seems like the game is playing very um, oriented towards top lane, given that, you know, Aurelia's died twice or whatever, there's been all these skirmishes happening top. Which means that I'm most likely going to be responding or ulting and roaming top side. I always love to put, and it's very important when you play Rise, is to put your pink ward on the side that you feel like you're going to be roaming towards. Rise is actually very similar to Twisted Fate in the sense his ultimate is, is actually quite similar to uh, TF's in the sense that you're going to be roaming a lot. And the way I played uh, Rise and why I think Rise is so good in solo queue is that your ultimate is insane. It's actually one of the best ultimates in the game and um, your roam potential is nuts because you can push and move exactly like Twisted Fate. So now Ari wants to base. Given that they, they had already made the play top, I know that no nothing's really going to be happening for a while on the map. So um, I end up just pulling the wave. And this is, remember what I said before, 
you're going to be deterring the enemy to base um, by either pulling the wave and freezing it or um, pushing it and denying them CS under tower. And I decided to freeze here thinking that, you know, they're not going to make another play top and, you know, they won't need me. But they actually end up do, do deciding to make another play top, which is quite strange, even though they just killed top again um, before. But um, so I ended up deciding to hold the freeze for a little bit. This is a little bit greedy. But it felt right in the moment because I didn't think they would go for another regain top. I thought Rexai would either reset or just clear his jungle. So I've got this decent little freeze. I deny Ari a whole another wave, um, which is really, really good for me. Things are going quite well at the moment. And in terms of my objective, again, I'm getting closer and closer to my, uh, my catalyst, which is going to get me closer to my Rod of Ages. As Rise, you're an insane scaling champion. And like I said before, CSing, XP, farm is very, very important. And the thing is, in these matchups, when you're versing a lot of these champions, if you're farming really well and going even, um, you're genuinely winning because you're getting closer to mid game. And Rise in mid game can go on the side and he's nearly unbeatable in the side lane. So um, remember, if the lane is like this and I've, I've got a, a big CS advantage, it's a, it, it means that the chances of me winning this game uh, increased massively. And now Ari comes back, given that he's missed a bunch of CS, so I, I click tab soon, 21 CS to 41 CS, so I'm 20 CS up here, just off better lane mechanics at the moment, abusing my TP, etc, etc. Another quick tip here, guys, that I didn't actually talk about before, in the early laning phase, um, say you, you're versing someone with quite high range, maybe it's a Victor, maybe it's a Syndra, Orianna, or something like that, and you want to proc your mana flow band, what you can actually do is you can walk up, and let's just say they're, they're by the caster creeps, you can walk up and you can actually um, E one of the caster creeps and it'll bounce, even if the E bounces but doesn't damage them because the bouncing doesn't damage them anymore, it just, even if it just goes onto them, it will still proc mana flow band. So it's a really good way of proccing mana flow band and um, so that's something to keep in mind because you always want to be looking to proc your mana flow band as much as you can. And the other thing here, if you want to damage them as well and you know that they're too close to the minion, instead of having to just walk up and E them directly, if they get too close, just E the minion and then and then Q all of it. It's just a, a, a nice little tip there for, for getting poke off. And now I know, um, guys... When Ari comes back here, I don't want to be continually getting pushed in now under tower because there's obviously then, if I'm sitting under tower here, Ari's poking and moving, it means she's going to be roaming, she's going to be impacting the map. My Rexa is trying to make a play topside or something. This is not good for me. So what do I do? I quickly identify what do I need to do. I need to push. So I straight away Q, I EQ, EQ again, dodge the, the charm, and I'm trying to now um, bully this Ari. Something also to note here, guys, usage of W. So, um, in a lot of games that I've watched, a lot of Rises, and even myself, I found that usage of your W is actually really important. In a lot, and knowing here, so, Ari, his form of self-peel, pre-6, is her charm. For me, my form of self-peel is my W, or my root, so I can run away. Ari then before, uh, just, to, just to show you, Ari missed her, her charm, right? So here, we go for this trade, bang, she misses her charm. Which rings alarm bells in me, in my mind. It shows, well, Ari's only form of self-peel is her charm, right? So look what I do. I realize that and I just walk up. I walk at her. I just EQ. Um, I just combo her. I, what, what is the combo I do here? So I walk up W, Q, EQ. Because that's the best combo. I actually missed the, the final Q here, which would have been a really big chunk. But you kind of see my intention here. And this is extremely important to identify on Rise. When you get windows to trade, you need to take them. Because you're so low range, you can't just play like a bitch. And it's very... There's another champion I, I, I did kind of say that on, on one of my... I can't remember which champion, but it's the same concept where... Um, since you're so low range, you can't afford to play like a bitch. I think it's like Fizz or Kiana or something like that. And it, it goes the same for me. Let's just say, for example, I take a bad trade and I use my W and then I continue to walk at them. They're going to be like, wait, what the hell? I can just chase him down because they have he has no form, way of getting me off them. So it's very important to think about your self-peel and be really careful about how you use your self-peel. Um, and in terms of combos, guys, I hear a lot of Rise guys or a lot of bullshit on the internet saying overcomplicating over Rise combos. They say, oh, there's a thousand different combos. QWE, blah, 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 blah. All you need to know, guys, to really, really simplify it is do you want an extended root 
for so maybe you're setting up a gank maybe you were escaping from a gank maybe um, you want to hold someone in place for some specific reason or do you want more damage and the reason that's important is basically that means you're either going to be go for an empowered w or you're going to go for an empowered q that's basically the main thing you need to know with combos don't overcomplicate it guys so let's get straight back into it so um i know i'm going really in detail but Really understanding all these small things about Rise is what makes a difference. And if you don't know all these small things about Rise, it's going to be quite troublesome. And the other reason, guys, why is I why I push and the, the huge strength of Rise, like I said before, is that you have insane roaming potential. Look at this. I get that little gap in a break where I can just roam. And because my ultimate... I don't use my ultimate freely, very much like t Twisted Fate ult. If you don't need to use it, you shouldn't use it. Twist, um, Rise ultimate level 1 is actually 2 minutes 10 seconds. It's, it's, it's a huge ultimate. It's like a tier 3 ultimate, which means it's super high cooldown, which means it's, it's valued as a very, very good ultimate. And I here, I saw Lee Sin running away, but I knew that I could get in behind him like this, which means I didn't really need to use my ultimate. So I come over here, force Lee Sin back, and he has to, he ends up dying here because of my roam. And this is another strength of Rise of pushing and moving. And now Ari ends up trying to follow here and ends up getting 6 luckily off the minion. And I think this allow ends up playing this quite poorly. He should have let me clean it up. So Ari ends up getting a double kill. But I kill the Ari here. And then I just get out. There we go. Bang. Alright. So not too bad. I mean we kind of kill. It was like a 2 for 2 in a way. Because we killed the Lee Sin and the Ari. I've got double buffs now. Um... And so it's not the end of the world here. So I recall. Um, I choose to actually go Mercs over getting my Catalyst, I believe. Because Mercs against any CC oriented champion or skillshot oriented champion is very, very good. Similar to when you verse Syndra. Similar to when you verse even Orianna because skill shots, Things like that. Or just heavy um, CC. I really like going Merc Treads. So. Now um, I'm working towards my Catalyst here. Stacking up my tier, which is great. But now, what do I see? I'm, I'm quite up in CS. Um, Ari doesn't have ultimate. Um, top, the, the side matchups are getting pretty chaotic. There's a lot of kill threat in both side lanes. It's a pretty fast-paced game. And this is a big misconception about Ryze is that, you know, he just wants to farm and scale. No, that's not the case. Ryze is a champion that is so versatile. You can push and move. You can freeze and play for ganks. You can, you can play it like TF. You can play it like... Fizz, you can play. You can play slow poke and just play wave clip. There's so many things you can do, um, and, and that's why I really want to get across in this video here. So now I know that it's kind of getting to a point where I have, I want to be able to um, back up my team and do something. So I know uh, Rexai was in the river here and looking to start dragon. So I put a pink here and then I put another ward here. Why in on here? I saw Ari walk up, even though he saw me walk into this bush. And this is a bit of game sense. I haven't actually spoke about this in my channel at all, but this is this is what I call game sense. This Ari knows I just walked into the river here, right? He knows I have Merc treads. He knows I'm quite strong with double buffs, and I put a pink here. Why would he just walk in here like this? I see him walk in there, which means I and a lot of players would just go, "Wait, what is he doing? I'm going to walk up and kill him." But that rang alarm bells for me. That made me think, "Well." If he's walking up like this, it most likely means Lee Sin's in the area. And what do I do? So I, I respect a little bit here. I'm waiting for the charm. Um, I, I'm like thinking about the charm. He misses it and Lee Sin is right here. And this is a bit of game sense here. Um, if they're doing something weird, most likely it's for a reason. And in these specific situations in River, you need to quickly think about, do you want the extended route or do you want the more damage? If you want damage, you do Q. So you do the you do Q first. So you do like Q W E Q. That's the best combo for damage. And I choose to go for a damage combo, not the root combo, um, which I know was the decision I made. End up cleaning him up on the back end there. And that's pretty self-explanatory here, guys. And notice here, I wouldn't have been in this fight again if I didn't think con was wasn't constantly thinking about my jungle's location. If I just let Ari push me in here, Ari would have got to this fight first. We may not have been able to get this dragon because Lee Sin and Ari would have been in river. And it would have been hard for me to walk in river because uh, I would have been scared. So here, this is a really why um, all the small details are important. 
And especially because Ryze is a champion that is so immobile in the sense that he can't, he doesn't have any dashes, any, you know, anything like any speed, or he has speed boost, but it's not really a reliable one if, if he doesn't have a target near him. But you know what I mean? He's not really in, um, a very mobile champion. And that's why you need to be on the front foot, constantly assessing. You want to be in the position first. And here, because I saw Rexi walk into River, I know I had to push to be here to get a bit of control to back up my team, which allowed me to get the kill on the back end of it, which is really, really good here. Um, and again, notice how in between waves, um, I'm constantly either clearing wards or putting down vision or, or setting up for a potential roam here. And I was, and notice how I pan my camera. It's a really good habit to get into when you play Rise. You really got to be panning your camera to sides. They don't know what your ultimate cooldown is. And that's something you need to think about. Just because you don't have ultimate, they don't know that. So this Ari's going to shit herself. If I duck out into vision here and start pathing up towards top, he's going to ping his Aurelia back, which is then going to allow my allow it to take better trades or get more pressure in lane. That's something to also think about here. So I pan my camera, check it out. And then a really niche thing you can do on Rise, not many mid-champions in the game can do this, is that you can actually take Raptors. He's one of the few champions that can take Raptors, purely because he has insane mana pool because of his build path, and he has so much AoE. And because you go Ravenous... Um, Ravenous Hunter, uh, um, you have so much healing, and with Catalyst, or when you get Catalyst, a lot of healing, so you can actually do it. So I ended up taking his Raptors, coming back mid, dodging the uh, the charm, and then getting a nice little trade on the back end here, and just catching some of this CS under tower. So things are looking really good. Decent CS, 76 CS at 8 minutes 50. So now, what am I doing? Um, constantly leaning out of vision in between waves. It's just a really good habit to get into. Even though I'm not going to roam, it's a really good habit just to duck into vision in between waves here. Constantly pushing. And this is why I love Ryze. His wave clear is second to none. It's probably his wave clear and Victor's wave clear are probably two of the best champions of the game for wave clear. And it's super underrated. Like, it's so good. And look at this, actually. I want to talk about this a little bit. If I E this, right, there's two things I can do. Like, I can, I can play for wave, so I can just, like... E, uh, sorry, I can just E this, and then Q, and then E, and then Q, whatever, and then just reset quickly, or I can have one E, hold it for a little bit, and then, and then, um, EQ again, and then get the speed boost, and then W, and then QE, get like another combo on the back end, I can use the E, the prepped E, to surprise him, catch him off guard, run past a minion wave, and actually get a bit of chunk on Ari. So that's why Ryze is so threatening, and that's what I love doing is playing really aggressively, sitting past a minion wave, sitting to the side where they have to make a choice between the wave and you. If they cho choose you, it's going to be hard to poke you because, you know, you've, I've already got my boots. Uh, I'm sitting kind of behind this, this minion here, and... If they don't, and let's just say they play for wave, I get the wave faster than them. They can't attack the ca these caster creeps because I'm, I'm positioned so far up. And this is just going to give me the ability to reset whenever I want. It's going to be give me the ability to roam faster than the enemy. It's just it's so many little advantages. Um, and it's when you start abusing these, this is when you're going to really feel the strength of uh, of rise here. So now I'm able to base, work towards my um, my rod of ages. The reason I go blasting one and not catalyst is because I feel like I'm quite strong. I want some extra AP. So I end up going, um, I have the sapphire crystal and the ruby crystal, but I just end up going the blasting one rather than, and it was a little bit more gold efficient, like in terms of utilizing all the gold that I had. So, um, I come back and notice I'm constantly assessing the sides here. Look at when I'm coming back. I'm looking at the bot lane. Like I'm looking at the wave setup. I'm looking at everything because I have my TP coming up in 15 seconds. My ultimate's now up. Um, and it's really important for me to uh, kind of identify what's happening in the lane. So I can already be thinking, where should I lean? If I push the wave, and I come back to lane and push the wave, which side am I going to be leaning to? So I come back mid, grab my blue, fast forward this a little bit. And again, what do I do? One thing I need to be careful of here, and, and I think I may make a mistake here, is that my team's all recalled, my whole top side. So I should be very, very careful here. I, I tried to like get the wave in, I think. And what do I do? So I get the wave in, nice, because I know that I can't roam onto a side. And my initial intention here was because I wanted to push and actually go to my Raptors and get my Raptors here. But at least then it was actually showing. And it's a good, it's a good principle to get into is know when your teammates are resetting, so you kind of don't push up, and your teammates aren't going to be there to back you up. So I end up grabbing my own Raptors here, and because we're on a, we're on pa uh, season ten, uh, what's it called the camps respawn a lot. Uh, a lot shorter, so it's it's okay to kind of take Raptor camps nowadays. But back in the day, it probably wasn't. But um, you definitely can now. 
They end up going for a gank on me. I have to blow flash, unfortunately. I hear this was a result of me not having a ward and not having a side to lean on, so it made me quite vulnerable. So this, what I actually should have done is here, I kind of had safe, uh, I had like, I kind of felt fake safety because I saw my Rek'Sai jumping into river like that. So um, I should have just been patient, let Ari push me in, and then wait for my Rek'Sai to get closer and then start to push out and get some vision down with Rek'Sai. So there's a bit of a mistake that I had to blow my flash because of it. So now what do I do? I see my jungler on bot side, and it's a really good habit to get into is lean onto the side of your jungler, which means because you can potentially set up dives. I lean, I'm looking at bot lane, um, and then I don't think bot lane was diveable because Vega was like backing up or something, so I just go back mid. So then I push. I think Ari roams top here. And then what do I do? Because I'm a champion that can also roam better than anyone in the game, I can push this in, and then I ping that I'm on my way bot. And look how long level 1 uh, Ryze ultimate is. And this is what actually happened, changed with Ryze. Ryze got a buff to his level 1 ultimate quite a while ago. I don't know how long ago, a few months ago or something like that. So his level 1 ultimate is range is nuts. And this is actually what made Ryze way better in my opinion. So you're able to do these really creative roams um, to the side lanes. And I get the double bounce to the Q. Rek'Sai can come clean up on the back end like that. I think I honestly misplayed this a little bit. I feel like I shouldn't have gone for MF at all. I think I should have panned my camera down a little bit. I actually didn't even see process this uh, Aurelia TP. I should have just uh, straight away went onto this TP, onto this uh, onto this Leona. Like, they kind of nearly escaped because of it. I could have played this a lot better. But the premise is still there. I was pushing and moving and really utilizing the creativity of my ultimate to get some really sick rooms off. And this is what you really need to be doing as Ryze. You can't just be a push and hit tower bot. And he is a champion that you can learn some really awesome fundamentals in terms of roaming on. Um, similar to TF, but even, like... Because TF sometimes can feel so different, like not even like a champion in League of Legends sometimes, because his ultimate's so absurd. But Ryze is a little bit more, he's definitely an important champion, a, a, a really great champion to learn roaming and side lane awareness on. Another thing to think about, guys, like I said to what, and I want to reiterate this again, because I think it's so important. Your ultimate cooldown is so large, so you want to be very careful with the usage of your ultimate. Don't view your ult as a waste. Don't view it as a... Don't use ult if you don't have to, is pretty much what I'm saying. It's a very good ultimate. It's a very good roaming tool. Use it wisely. So I've come back, got my Rod of Ages now. This is where um, things will start to get out of control. Because um, And the, the thing I love about Ryze is that a champion that... Why I love about Ryze is build path is amazing as a champion. He, he can build um, defensive... Like, he can build... This, uh, these tanky items, but doesn't lose damage because he gets AP from mana. Like, it's nuts. Like, he can build these items. Like, it, 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 it's probably... He's one of the best um, build... One of the cleanest build paths um, in any mid-champion in the game, in my opinion. So, what I do here, and I think this is a little mistake. I was originally going to lean top to, to go for a dive onto this Aurelia. But I didn't even know. My bot lane actually got their tower. Which is amazing for me because... Um, I get to go on the side lane. So I, I kind of identi and identify that a little bit slow. And I should have been already bot right now. And um, Ari's able to get a weird kill on Jaina, which was strange, but I don't know. But um, Vega should have been... I should have already been bot, and then Vega should have got this mid farm. So this is really, really inefficient. And this is what I say sometimes in coaching, is that if you're not really aware about where you need to be on the map, and maybe this is autopiloting, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm tunneling too hard on roaming to sides or this top lane that um, I kind of forgot that Vega was coming mid. So it got a bit sketchy here. Actually, this is actually a really good opinion, a really good example of using your peel. Here, my, I, I couldn't peel for my team. Yes, Jana got nailed by this charm, like weirdly, but I didn't. If I actually saved my W and for a, a root like EW, we might have been able to kill him on the back end there, but who knows? Anyway, fast forwarding a little bit. Um, now I get to go to the side, and this is where Rise really comes into play. Um, you know, you're level 11, you've got your level 2 ultimate, you've got a, lot, a bunch of, like, um, you've got a bunch of HP, and, and, you know, your Rod of Ages is stacking, you're quite tanky, you're annoying to kill, you've got movement speed, you can set up ganks, you can roam, there's a bunch of things you can do right now, it's really, really nuts when you get into the sideline like this, look at this, just taking really awesome trades, Ari can't deal with me, Ari also has Ignite, so if the fight breaks out, I have ult coming up in 15 seconds, so there's gonna be always a man advantage, it's getting absolutely out of control now. Now, and, and the great thing about Rise is that you can clear camps so fast. So in between um, waves, what you can do is actually clear camps, and um, yeah. And now I actually want to base and start finishing my Archangels. And because people were resetting and people were dead, I thought it was a good opportunity to reset and grab my Lost Chapter because Lost Chapter is a really awesome item. 
Anyway, fast forwarding a little bit. So in terms of mid game, there's a few tips I have. Um, you need to not just go. A, a really good habit to get into is don't just run straight to the side lane. Even though you want to be in the side lane, do this sort of detour. Run mid first. See what's up. Potentially back up your team with an ultimate. And the great thing about this, and this is what I call getting control with your team first. I've grouped me with my team. We're clearing vision. You know, Leona's here. I can clear pinks. I can set up my own wards here. Then I can go into the side lane. If I do this, it's going to allow me to be able to push my limits in the side a lot more, knowing I have a bit of safety, knowing my team, or knowing my mid lane or my AD carry and support are going to be safe mid, knowing that they've got a bit of control out to be able to push out mid. And now I know that I can just continue to... Um, to push out the side. And now this is really, really good for me because um, now Ari has to react to me. And what I gotta be careful of here actually, as Ryze, um, if you're versing a champion that doesn't take teleport, they're gonna look to ditch. Then they're, they're not gonna look to match you in the side lane. So what you need to do is be really on top of pings. I should actually be communicating with my team right now, is wait for me. I want to push out the side, and then I want to I want to make someone come to me. I want to make someone react to me. And if I don't do that, um, my team's going to force a fight. Ari's going to get there, and I'm not going to be there, and it's going to be a 4v5. And look what actually happens here. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, pushing. Ari doesn't respond. He actually just groups with the team and tries to make a pick. And they end up taking this fight that's like a 4v5, unfortunately. And this is all... I actually take responsibility. Yes, they trade kills, but I actually take responsibility for this because I didn't properly communicate with the team what I wanted to do. So this is actually on me. And anyway, what you want to be doing then, um, ideally, is I ideally want my team to be sitting mid. Then what happens? Someone reacts to me in the side. Then I use my ultimates or just my just walking through the jungle to pressure mid and slowly get chip and break and potentially dive mid or break this mid tower. That's what I really want to do. Um, I want to use my side lane pressure to exert pressure on mid so we can get man advantage so we can break this mid tower. And this is what you really need to be doing in your games. And if mid tower was already broken, it's the same concept. You want to be pushing out the side, getting to t uh, team fights first with your ultimate, playing man advantages, or again, have someone hover you on the side and play a 2v2 on the side lane. And I'll go into this more in the next game. I actually have some really good advice in the next VOD that I go over. So then I group mid after pushing out the side. They're losing a bunch of farm on the side lane. And I group and we end up grouping for this mid tower. And now the game's getting quite out of control. We've got all the outer towers. I'm really, really far ahead of Ari at the moment. I'm 3-1, 157 CS in 16 minutes. Um, things are looking really, really good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the the uh, the VOD here for now. And I'm going to go into the second one. I think I've kind of got all the key points from this one. And there's a lot more we can get into in the next one. So keep watching, guys. So jumping straight into the second VOD, the reason I wanted to show this one is because Lucian is a really bad matchup. I actually took Magic Resist in this matchup. I thought I was versing in a Kali mid. I thought it was actually Lucian top. So I actually have Magic Resist. And... The reason I want to show you this is because you can, and, and Ryze, even in a bad matchup, can minimize and still be extremely effective through smart itemization and playing intelligently with waves. First thing you need to think about, again, in terms of game plan, I have a, an Elise. I'm pretty sure, what do they have this game in terms of their jungle? I actually didn't catch it. I can't remember what happened. They have an Echo. So it means we have a little bit more kill threat. Um, Lucian ends up taking Cleanse, which means there's less kill threat on me. But again, I know that regardless, he has cleanse and doesn't have ignite. And I, even though we have gank set up, I can't punish this guy level 1. He hard destroys me level 1. So I have to respect, let him push me in, farm, proc my mana flow whenever I can. Um, and really want to get to my tier. And when you're versing a lot of these AD champions, whether it's Talon or Kiana or Lucian mid like this. Ninja Tabis is amazing. It's an amazing purchase. And why it's even more amazing on Ryze rather than other champions is that... Armor is extremely uh, even more effective when you build HP. And because Ryze naturally builds HP through his build path with Rod of Ages or Righteous Glory, whatever you want to build, um, it, it makes him extremely tanky and extremely unkillable. So um, my goal for this game is obviously the first objective, get to my tier, but I want to buy my Ninja Tubbies ASAP. So if I could, if I can um, base on around 800 gold, that'd be ideal for like a cloth armor and a tier. That would be the best possible uh, recall. And I have this in my man. And notice, notice for some reason, Lucian, what he could have done, he could be looking to like dash and get a thing on me or a Q through these minions here. Um, I was expecting him to play a lot more aggressive in the early game. Uh, maybe he was scared because we are having at least jungle and he doesn't want to um, get himself, you know, in a position where he's trading too much HP, which is understandable. But um, because he's given me that space, I'm trying to thin the wave as much as I can. And I was expecting not to be able to thin the wave at all. And I thinned it a tiny bit. But um, it's not. It's still not optimal here. 
for me. But I'm, again, I'm just catching this wave under tower. He gets a little trade off on me, but I trade back with my W, trying to proc my mana flow. Playing very, very defensively here. And 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 a lot of mis a big mistake I actually see with a lot of Rise players is they they don't. Um, play defensively when they need to and again this really hurts their itemization their their bases and again it has a snowball effect for the rest of the game here so it's not too bad rise is actually okay at csing under tower so things are looking okay for now so in terms of cs we're actually 10 cs to 10 cs which is looking good this is the third wave here i believe um so again just auto attacking not doing anything too special here for some reason, I, I think I accidentally leveled up Q... Oh, no. The reason I actually leveled up WQ this game is because Q does a little bit more damage than... Um, Q does a little bit more damage than E under tower for CSing. So, for, for this... I remember for this specific melee minion, I'm thinking, oh, I really want to get this... I don't want to miss this melee minion. So, what do I do? I level up Q just to make sure that I can get it because I, I think E wouldn't have actually killed that minion. I might be wrong, but that's my intention here. But majority of the time, you want to be doing WE. And if I get to level 3, things are going to be much easier at level 3. And there, Lucian ducks out of vision topside and I actually ping that he water topside, which is very useful to do for your jungler. So my jungler is not going to waste time. Now I get level 3. So now what you want to see me doing, and I said this before in my last video, when you're versing champions that you're scared of or they have more pressure on you, what you can do is actually E this or E one of the minions near them just to proc your mana flow. That still procs mana flow band. Like that, bang. Still proc my mana flow. And I actually get a nice little bit of chunk off there. And if I actually CS all these minions, I nearly get... I'm pretty sure I get my tier. Like I said, you can get tier of actually three waves. Anyway, um, really playing patient here. And it's very important to play patient. Don't want anything too much to happen. Um, let's play this out. I don't want to skip forward because I want to make sure that I'm picking up every little detail here. Something to think about. Notice how I'm not standing... Yes, I could be looking to heavy trade on this guy. There definitely is a argument to heavy trade, and I don't do it this game. But I want to. I want to tell you both sides of this because you know I'm not going to play perfect every game. And playing devil's advocate here, there's actually two ways. Two ways you can abuse um, your teleport advantage. If I walk up here and I take a really heavy trade on Solution, he's going to be maybe a quarter HP. I'm going to maybe get get half HP here. I can then also use that opportunity to then shove out this mini wave and then base and TP back where he's going to be low HP and then I'm going to um, I'm going to have my tier because I've already got my 500 gold and I'm going to have an advantage. I think my initial intention in this game or the other option again is play a little bit safer, farm to 800 gold so I can actually get a claw farmer on top of that because I knew that I started I actually took magic resist instead of armor and it's going to give me a little bit more survivability in lane, durability in lane. So I think that was my intention in this specific I th yeah, that was my intention in this specific game. There, there are different ways of utilizing TP as long as you're thinking about it in your reviews, but um again, the the main principles here though is you want to be playing safe you want to be playing safe for your first objective to get to your tier, but you also want to be thinking about your next itemization for me, which Ninja Tarbies, and that's why I really wanted to get to uh, to my, my Cloth Armor. I'm playing very patient here. Something to also think about in terms of, if they walk up too close like this, um, I, I want to actually quickly break down this trade here. Q. So I, I Q, and then W, and I don't want to take that extended trade, because he could have, I think he's actually playing way too scared. He could have actually traded onto me, but the point I want to make... I didn't make this in my last vod, is that Q accuracy. Q accuracy is unbelievably important. Um, both, not just for, I would say more in mid game, less in early, early game, because it's quite easy to hit your Qs in laning phase, but Q um, is your, you know, your, your pretty much main skill shot is rise. And your damage is completely, is, is insanely reliant on hitting your Q in a lot of these team fights. So you may just think, oh, it's okay just to miss a Q. I can, you can brush it off. Missing a Q is not a big deal because, you know, your mana cooldowns are so low and you, you spam so many abilities. It's very important that you're hard on yourself for hitting Qs because Q can literally be the different... In a lot of your, your combos, you're actually going to be doing two or even three Qs within a whole team fight or, or a skirmish. And more... Uh, in a skirmish, or In team fight, you're going to be doing way more than, than two. And um, Q is your main source of damage. So... Yes, it may seem really obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many people are very blasé or very, you know, whatever, I miss a Q, it's not a big deal. 
especially around their their cues. So that's something I want to highlight, and I think it's important to have a think about in your own games when you get into your own review here. And when I hit that cue there, I was thinking, oh, okay, that was actually pretty good damage. And it just made me think about that because it is important to to know. So I'm getting closer to my 800 gold here. If I was versing any other matchup, I would have just hard shoved the wave with my EQs and just reset for my tier. But in this specific matchup, again, I, I really wanted my uh, cloth armor. And he's playing respectfully, knowing that Elise is nearby. And I get the wave in, and I'm able to get a nice little reset here. For, and I stay in base with my cloth armor, come back. And I actually choose not to TP. And I remember, um, the, I talk about this in some of my TF videos and Victor videos and stuff like that. I remember also um, why... I specifically chose this wave to recall it was for two reasons. One is that um, I knew that I could base on my tier and my cloth armor. But the other thing is that when you're versing someone who doesn't have teleport, if you bet recall um, just before the next wave is a cannon wave, this next coming wave is a cannon wave, it's going to be a lot harder for them to push. You're going to not miss much CS at all. So I see that cannon wave. I even pan my camera on it just to double check. Cannon wave, bang, I get my cloth armor. And I look at my, I look straight away, pan my camera on mid. And I don't just TP straight away. I actually assess, oh, since it's a cannon wave, it's going to take quite a while. It took him quite a while. And look at this. It's going to hit the first one. And then it's going to hit the cannon. And it's going to take so long to get the cannon. And look, I'm already here. So I only probably in total missed two CS. And now I actually get to keep my TP. So I actually have um, TP advantage in this lane. I already had TP advantage, but I actually don't even have to use it in lane. This is something you can do through smart wave management. So don't just default always use your teleport. Um, if you can save it, save it. Because it's really helpful. It can potentially allow you to counter gank. So with my priority here, again, I was actually looking to do a very similar thing... Um, that I did last game was actually potentially steal these raptors away, but echo was on the raptors already I get a nice little deep ward and then I EQ like this and I steal a bunch of raptors here. I Kind of mess up my combo a little bit. Oh, I should have been patient and um, Wait for my E to come up because here look my E was on two seconds So I panicked and just used my W and I was thinking if I just W E and then Q I can use the speed boost to run away but what I do is I E I get the speed boost, but it's not enough. And if I actually had E, W, get the actual route and then run away, I might not have had to flash, but still. Anyway, he chases me. We get a kill on the back end here. Um, and again, I think the, the thing that you can take away from this is that... Um, like, even if you feel like you don't have the mana to do the raptors, it's really good to get a deep ward onto them. And if the enemy jungles on them, since you can, like, AoE them, and a lot of the time you can actually steal away a bunch of raptors. Anyway, fast forwarding a little bit, getting closer to my tarbies, that's why I get my, my tier 1 boots. So let's, let's start, I want to kind of speed this up a little bit to kind of get to the crux of it. So now, um, one thing you need to think about... Um, uh, as Ryze, don't just view him as a push and move. And this is why I love Ryze and why I think he's so flexible. Notice before in that skirmish, we blew uh, Lucian's cleanse. So straight away, junglers are going to recognize if you ping and communicate. Um, I said here, on my way, on my way. This guy's a very uh, obviously a free kill because I have insane gank set up with my, e, my EW into chain CC. We can burst this guy. So that's also something to think about when, you, um, when you're playing Ryze. He's not just a push and push and move he's also a gank setup champion like this stun I, I root after that and we get a hundred to zero burst this is why i love love rise and 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 it's something that's super underrated on rise as a champion like people don't talk about rise's gank setup or they don't talk about him as a champion that you actually play towards they they view him as this champion that just wants to farm and scale or at best you know maybe push and move but no like he's super underrated so now um, fast forwarding a little bit, I base, get my tarbies, and because I saved my TP, I'm able to TP back, and I want to start to walk to work towards my catalyst again. So now, look how good, look how, look how ridiculous this is. And this is why both, I simultaneously don't rate Lucian, but as a champion, Ryze is one of the champions, if you get one kill, you're so obnoxious. Look at this. I only have one kill. All I have is a tier and a tarbies and a mana, and a mana crystal. I can just... Instantly blow my abilities on the wave to wave clear. I have my ultimate now. I can just push and move so, so easily. Your wave clear is nuts. And now I can just push and roam to a side like this. And and no one's going to be able to do anything about it. And this is the beauty of it. I'm both tanky. I'm durable. I'm mobile in terms of roaming. Or I can play safe. I can play for gank setup. There's so many things I can do. And I can just push and move. And look at this. When I come back to lane here, guys, a really good habit to get into is... Um, 
like once you have your ultimate, it's really good habit to get into. It's just push and move and um, assess your options. And here I knew top was heavy, heavy trading, so I thought pushing and moving was really, really good and ended up getting a nice little roam off and killing this Akali. And I come back mid, grab my blue buff. And now it's just rinse and repeat. I want to be setting up my pink on the side that I think that I'm going to be roaming to. My bot lane's kind of getting pumped, and we've already killed top, so I want to regank top. So now I'm pushing and moving, pushing and moving, putting my pink on top side, leaning out of vision in between the waves. I very rarely am going to be hitting tower. I'm either going to be taking their raptors, taking my raptors, recalling, or roaming. I'm very, very rarely going to be hitting mid tower here. They end up killing this Akali just before I could get there. Just in case, you know, I maybe could have dived, used the blasting plan to get over. It's the same principle here, guys. And this is a, a matchup that's favored, uh, is actually considered unfavorable. And purely because I have Tarbies, I've itemized well. I've used my TP well in the early game. Um, I've got a few roams off. I'm in a really, really good position here. And now I'm just respecting a little bit because my jungler's in base. I know the Echo's in the area because they just got Dragon. Um, I need to be a little bit careful. Something to think about here. I actually learned this the hard way. I remember versing a Lucian mid. I could easily walk up here and, and just E, W, Q and then run away. The only problem with that is then I have to respect the whole time my W is down. Because my W, again, reiterating, is my only form of self-peel. And now, if I walk up after I use my W before, he can literally dash onto me, Q auto, chase me down and ult me. And, you know, chunk me hardcore. And that's why here, I'm not just walking up and EWing. Or for two reasons, obviously, my jungler's not in the area. We just made a play top. The enemy jungler's missing or just on we know he's in the area vicinity because they just got dragon. But also because from a, a pure 1v1 self-peel perspective, I want to be taking as be good trades as possible. Fast forwarding a little bit, look at this. Just constantly, I can push whenever I want. Leaning onto the top side where my vision is. And... Even if I don't have ultimate, um, I end up walking up here, scaring off Akali. I could have also chose to base here, um, but I just chose to go for the roam. And I think the reason I don't is because I couldn't afford my Rod of Ages yet, so I wanted to keep staying on the map for a little while. Pike's roaming. Not a big deal. So, fast forwarding again. Um, you can kind of get where I'm coming from here, just pushing and moving. Um, trying to get to my Rod of Ages as fast as I can. Using my, I use my ult again, bot lane to counter gank. Um, we end up chasing this echo down, getting another kill. And then Pike ends up uh, diving me here. So there's a few, I want to keep going forward. There's a few more points I want to highlight before I wrap up this video. So, where is it? Again, in between ways, like I said before, if you're not roaming, and if you're not setting up a gank, and if you don't need a recall, the great thing about Ryze is you can do camps really, really quick. Whether it's wolves, whether it's raptors, or when you're in the side lane, whether it's krugs, anything like that. Um, very, very important to, I mean, something you can definitely utilize in your own games. The other thing you need to think about like this, in these specific situations, let's just say you have a champion on your team, like a Thresh, like a Blitzcrank. Anything that can follow up on your CC. In this specific situation here, Echo goes for a dive on me. I hold my W, then I W when Blitz is in range. I was, and Blitz actually didn't even need to flash because I actually had the, the, the root on him here. And I actually was going to hold my W when, until Blitzcrank was in range and get a nice little hook onto him. Something you guys can also utilize in your game. Don't rush to use your W. Um, try and time it with people in the vicinity to try and chain CC and get some kills. So I want to fast forward a little bit. Um, because there's one last thing I want to kind of highlight when playing Rise in your own games. is like this. So this is a perfect example. I'm going to a side lane. I'm getting Krugs before heading down. Same thing. Pushing side and then looking to, after I push side, create a man advantage. Because the person you're most likely versing isn't going to be taking TP. They can't match you. Since you have ultimate and TP a lot of the time. Anyway, fast forwarding a little bit more. And this is where the crux of it comes in. Alright guys. Where, is, where are we here? Okay, side lane. So I get a lot of questions about mid game and this is the perfect example here and I make a crucial mistake and I've been waiting for an example to show that really, really highlights this. So I'm really, really strong. I'm five and two. Yes, I win my 1v1 super hard, but that doesn't matter a lot of the time, especially when you're playing um, when the, the rest of your team is behind. What's the main problem we see here already? Well, two things. My team's not really on the map. This Elise is here, this Riven's here, but look at the vision in the river. What do we see here? There's nothing. And what do we see in terms of my AD carrying support? 
they can't even, they're scared to push out mid, they, they can't push out mid, or because they lose 2v2, but also, we can't control vision and river, because they get pushed off mid, and they can sweep all our vision, they can put pinks in river, whatever. What does that mean for me? Well, it means that I can't push up the side. I'm scared to auto-attack the tower like this. Even though I have a ward in this tri-bush, they can still come through the, through the river. I have to respect. And this is both hurting me and hurting my team. And this is a massive mistake I see a lot of players do, is they just go into the side hoping um, that the team's not going to die and collect ways mid while you know I'm in the side lane. I'm creating pressure. A lot of the time, this ends up just in a disaster. So what do, you, what do I recommend? So... What you need to do, and what I should have done, is I should have got this wave, because my team's not in a position to follow anyway. Then I should have went back, this way I'm going to draw on the minimap here, walked all the way back, grouped mid with, and got my Elise to come mid, ping the Elise. Then, we walk into River together, clear vision, using me, me and Elise's strength, even though my AD carries behind, we can use our strength to clear vision, place pinks, then I walk to the side lane. So what that's going to do is then our team's going to have, a, I'm going to have a lot more vision river, which, which means I'm going to be able to play a lot more aggressive. Then I can drag people to me and just back up with my realm warp or back up with my mover speed. And then that's going to free up my mid lane to be able to do whatever they want. So again, you can't just walk into the side lane with having no control. And it's what I call having control of river. And if you don't have any control of river, um, it's not good for anyone. So you, sometimes when you and it, if my team were winning, for example, my AD carrying support were winning, and we already and they could get control two v two mid, and they don't need me. It's fine. I can just walk up here and do this already. But if they don't have control, I need to come back and help them get control. And this is an absolutely crucial thing as a concept. You guys need to understand if you want to play Rise because split pushing is such an essential part of Rise's identity as a champion in terms of actually carrying games as it gets into mid to late game. Last thing I wanted to touch on before we start wrapping up this video is um, alt positioning. So let's go back a little bit over here. Where is it? Where are we here? Go a bit further back. Here we go. No, I think it's even before this actually. Yeah, here we I think that might have been it. Here. So, um, Realm Warp. Realm Warp, as I've spoken a lot about Realm Warp, but I haven't got into the micro. Don't, so with Realm Warp, when you actually go on the map and you, you use your Realm Warp, this is why you should not use, um, you should not use Smartcast. Look at how, when I'm doing it, look at this. Oh, I need to get it on the actual, the actual, um, target frame. Where is it? You'll see it in a second. Three, two, one. All right. Oh. Anyway, there's a circle that comes up like this when you when you hover your ultimate. And the reason this is important is because sometimes, let's just say the team is um, around a wall. Let's just say a team like this, they're around a wall. You can put your ultimate like this. Well, that's a bit big, actually. You can put your ultimate like this. And what's awesome about this is that, let's just say um, they flash over this wall. You can position your character on this side of your realm warp when you're actually TPing in and it's going to put you there. And if you put it on this side of the, if you, you position yourself before you go through, it's going to put you there. So you should always be trying to optimize. And notice when I come in on this realm warp, uh, realm warp, I'm not down here. I'm not up here. I'm not in the middle. I'm trying to already maximize the distance between me and where I need to be. And when I use my realm warp, uh, realm warp. And so this is just a little micro tip that you guys can use. And especially when you're using Realm Warp, don't use Smartcast. Try and put it in a position where you can maximize their ability to um, to chase them down, your ability to chase them down and minimize the amount of their ability to actually escape. So, so hopefully this video encourages you guys to, to play Rise. It is a very, very difficult champion. I'm not going to lie. It is one of my personal favorites. I still struggle with it all the time, but I think it's such a fun champion, a very versatile champion. Have a go. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments or in the Discord. Cheers. Thanks for watching.